Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss A Bigger Splash, starring Tilda Swinton, Matthias Schoenert, forgive me if I said that wrong, Ray Fiennes, and Dakota Johnson, directed by Luca Guadagnino. Now before I get into this, I tried watching the French movie that came before this, I couldn't do it, because I'm, I'm going to just say it right now, I cannot... Um, take notes and read subtitles at the same time. Although I've done it a few times. But this one, I don't know if I could do it. Because sometimes they'll talk really fast to the point that I don't understand what the fuck they're saying. So, let's get into this movie. I've watched it twice, and let's see how this goes. Oh, and before I do, I have reviewed Call Me By Your Name before, so if anybody asks... I've already done that movie, and you can find it under the 2017 Oscar nominees back then. So, let's get into it. We open with a concert of Marion Lane, played by Tilda Swinton, as she looks like a rock star. And we move on to her and her boyfriend, Paul DeSmit, or Smeet, or something like that, played by Matthias Schoenert, living in their house in Italy, and... They go to the beach until they relax on the beach, and Marion gets a call from her friend Harry Hawks, played by Ray Fiennes, coming from an airplane to visit Marion and Paul in Italy. And as they go get to the airport, Harry brings his daughter Penelope Lanier, played by Dakota Johnson, from the god awful two Madam movies, Madam Web and Fifty Shades of Grey, the first one and the other ones as well. While Marion can't talk as she has a voice problem, which is very good acting from Tilda Swinton, as she comes off as the best actor, in, or not actor, but character in the movie. Well, I've seen Matthias Schoenertz in a couple of films, like The Danish Girl, Red Sparrow, and I reviewed him before in David O. Russell's Amsterdam, but he comes off like an asshole. And I'm going to be honest, in those films, I don't remember him in them. Well, he comes off, well, Harry comes off fucking annoying, and Penelope is not a good character, and in my opinion, Dakota Johnson is not a good actress anyways. As I like one of the four characters, and that's Marion. While Italy looks beautiful in the way it's shot from start to finish. Harry tries to take Marion talk... Tries to make Marion talk despite she can't talk. And Marion says to Harry to stay with them at their house, and Paul doesn't like the idea because... Didn't they used to date before the movie begins? As that was bothering me from the get-go. They stay the night, and Harry makes breakfast for everybody in the morning, and Clara is happy about it. Or maybe not, I couldn't tell you. While the audience can see through Penelope's top, and I don't want another fucking Fifty Shades of Grey, despite I've seen... Despite there's three of them, and I've only seen the first of that one of that series, and it didn't impress me to see the other two. While Harry brings Muriel and Sylvie to the house for that afternoon. And Harry is talking a hell of a lot and at the same time annoying the shit out of me at this point. To the point I want to sh I want him to shut the fuck up at this point. As he's so obnoxious at this movie. In, at this point in the movie. Sometimes we get flashbacks of most of, most of Harry and Marion's relationship. While we get a little bit of Harry and Paul. And they meet while Paul is interviewing Harry and gets him a drink for bringing up how distracting the background is. And did we need the flashbacks? Absolutely fucking not. Because they're distracting me from the movie and was not a good choice from director Luca Guadagnino. And same goes for the music choices, as that distracted me as well as it's unnecessary in my opinion. Harry talks a hell of a lot about records he produced, and he dances for a while, and I typically like Ray Fiennes as an actor, but this character comes off like he was smoking a shitload of crack. And he's done much better movies than this, from Schindler's List to Harry Potter to a few of the James Bond movies to even the Grand Budapest Hotel, for Christ's sakes. As this is not one of his best performances, in my opinion. There were times Marion was seen nude as she and Paul blow each other, literally, and I question the choices the movie makes as it feels very questionable as were the choices throughout the movie, and there were times it was making me pretty uncomfortable. For example, Harry brings up his and Marion's past as a couple, 
nonstop. And as it was making me uncomfortable, in not a good way, I'll say, Penelope makes assumptions about Paul as she wants to get a reaction out of him. And he says, don't waste your time. After seeing this movie a couple of times, I feel like telling the audience to, to not waste their time with this movie. Marion and Harry go to a bar and sing, start singing karaoke in the bar while Marion has some kind of throat cancer. And remind me, why the fuck does Harry try to get Marion to sing and talk while she can't talk at the same time? Penelope comes in and to do some karaoke with them while they look like they were going to smooch where when their father and daughter and that came off a bit creepy to me. The next morning comes and Marion sees Harry saying goodbye and to Muriel and Sylvie. And Mary, while Marion wants to say something about, to Penelope as they have a chat, while Harry was distracted and crashed a car on a ledge, as he can't get back to the road and asks Paul for help. And Paul can't help him either and gives a, Harry a ride back. To the house while he takes a damn sh his damn shirt off and they while they drive back home paul tells harry to stop talking as he doesn't and i thought please stop for christ's sake stop talking and when they get home he jumps in the pool completely naked and i'm thinking this movie definitely earned its r rating while i'm not liking the while i'm not liking this movie at this point while Marianne and Harry go to the store to get some groceries, Penelope is in the pool, and Paul tells her about to take a about a lake, and she wants him to take her there. And I have a feeling Harry is trying to get back together with Marianne while dating Paul, as Penelope wants to get together with Paul while he's with Marianne, which is so damn obvious as it was telegraphed to me on screen. Paul takes Penelope to the lake that's two miles from walking distance, from the house and they stop for a second and four men staring at Penelope while acting like motherfucking perverts when they get there Penelope takes her top off and I'm thinking oh god as I can't help but think of Fifty Shades of Grey when she gets undressed uh, for that piece of shit of a movie and that's not a good thing whatsoever Marion and Harry go to a restaurant of some kind and the TV is on in the background and I was distracted by the TV being the loudly, being loud, and they get back to the road, back to the house. And when they get, and when they return, Marion wonders where Paul and Penelope went while they cook dinner. And suddenly, Marion and Harry smooch and says they shouldn't see each other anymore. And what a fucking questionable choice for my mind to go there. I mean, Jesus Christ. Paul and Penelope get back to the house successfully while at this point at one point they were lost on the way back and penelope goes to her room and mary and paul and harry have a discussion that gets uncomfortable and here while harry goes to penelope's room to check up on her and they want to leave italy by the next day as later in the night comes and penelope's asleep as marianne and harry and paul have a talk about how Paul wants Harry out of the house while Harry swims completely naked. And I thought, we're getting this again? Really? But while the conversation ends, they fight until Paul chokes the life out of Harry in the pool and it kills him. And I'm thinking, what the fuck kind of a movie is this? As this is turning into a goddamn tragedy at this point, And I don't give a shit about it. The next day comes and Clara sees Harry dead body in the pool as Penelope isn't shocked but Marion is as she's sad about it while she screams and she doesn't know at this point Paul was the murderer in Harry's death until she sees scars on his body and I'm starting to think she knows now and I she still says with Paul stays with Paul I mean Jesus Christ that was a questionable choice this movie made the, the detective has a chat with Paul well, he doesn't speak Italian, but Penelope does a matter of fact. And Marion and Paul won't find out until the very end of the movie. And the detective has a hard time with Clara translating Italian as he asks for them to come to the police station to find a suitable translator. And they vacuum the water out of the pool 
and this isn't working for me when this is, becomes a tragedy. Marion looks at Paul and Penelope as they go to the police station, and she learns Paul has been smooching Penelope. When they get there, and when they get there, Paul is questioned about Harry's murder while Marion asks Penelope about his wound, and that and that's when she finds out about Paul and Penelope smooching each other up like a storm. And at this time, I'm growing more and more irritated by this movie. After they've been questioned by the police, Marion and Paul take Penelope to the airport to go home a couple days later. And Marion is Marion's angered that she smooched Paul. And she can speak Italian, and she's 17 years old, and it gets intense to the point. Marion smacks Penelope in the face. And she goes on the airplane, and Marion and Paul are on the way home. Meanwhile, it's rainy, and one of the police officers asks Marion for an autograph on her album, and she signs it, and they go back home, and the climax was awful. It was terrible, and I can't believe this ended up in such a tragedy. I mean, oh my god. Now it's time for my rating. I'll give this movie a 4.0 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, the Italy... The the way Italy was shot from start to finish looks beautiful, but other than Tilda Swinton's performance, which was very good, I don't like the other three characters as Paul comes off er, so regretful while Harry annoyed the shit out of me from his first scene to last scene. And Dakota Johnson's a bad actress anyways, and I don't like their performances either. While some things the script did for this whole movie bothered me from the get-go. Director Luca Guadagnino was sometimes distracting me with the music choices as well as the flashbacks weren't necessary for this movie whatsoever and there were times the movie makes questionable choices while it was making uncomfortable it was making me uncomfortable in a not a good way and that must be the director luca guadagnino style like i reviewed call me by your name in that movie if you've seen that show, it was something I did not like because it was uncomfortable. And I wonder how Challengers is going to be while I haven't seen his Suspiria remake since I first saw it in theaters six years ago. And I never saw Bones and all. And I don't remember much about it at all. Well, the Suspiria remake. And I never saw Bones and all. This is a movie you should not waste your time with while people should skip this movie right off the bat. As this movie creeps me out, as this is a non-recommendation for this movie, because if you're if you've not heard or of nor seen this movie, keep it that way. As this movie was bad uh, after a couple of viewings, and this is a pretty forgettable film in my opinion. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with the Suspiria remake because I've already done Call Me by Your Name, and until then. Let's not make things too terrible awkward terribly awkward.